has an issue with the 10 reasons to vote no, uh, what I've done and what we've done is we have shown the article where they can find on why we are saying to vote no, because it's one thing to say vote no, but it's a whole nother thing is to show the member why. Uh, and I'm gonna give you an example. Uh, last night, I had a member come and ask about, you know, you know, uh, hey, what's up, what's going on with you? Uh, one of the things they wanted to find out was why we're telling people about the 10 reasons to vote no. So I showed them, um, I'm gonna read it to you. It's right here, it, it's the dishonesty and technology uh, a reason to vote no. It says, UPS can still fire you for dishonesty based only on information from technology. Nine drivers lost their technology protections. They can now be fired based only on technology. Right now, that language reads, no employee can be fired for technology. Well, the new contract shows, it says that no, with the employee crossed out, mm -hmm. if you look at it, it's, it's, it's um, Article 6, Section 6. Look that up. You'll find it says no driver. It, it crossed the employee out. So now uh, the inside worker can be uh, fired for technology. So, and I, when I explained that to the member, they was taken back like, oh, now it's a little bit more than I, I, I thought. You know, they thought that since, you know, we're getting, the, they're getting this big bump up in pay, uh, they thought that it was cool. But once you find out that you can get fired so easily, you may not even get the money. So you need to make a decision on, on how you're going to vote. That's a very important part, uh, part. Being able to get fired so easily doesn't have nothing to do with how much money you make. Because you may get fired, then what you, you're not going to make anything. So everybody need to take need to take that into consideration. There's more things, but I let some of my, my cohorts here let them talk about that. All right, I'm, I'm gonna touch on the two tier, 22 four hybrid driver. Now, UPS, I know I know they put out there that they wanted you to work any five days out of seven. Now they didn't actually put that in the contract, but but here's how that's going to affect you. We are not guaranteed, no full-timer or no, no, nobody is guaranteed 40 hours a week. Our guarantee is daily. So when you report to work, you're guaranteed for that day. That's it. There's nothing in the contract that says we're guaranteed the whole 40 hours. So the way that they can make that five and seven work is because it, it, it's something, because it, 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 what it reads is if work is available. Right. So what they can do is, if work is available, they can put all that way. work on Saturday and Sunday. Right. So they can leave Friday with less volume, Monday with less volume, which means they can lay people off on Friday and Monday. And what they'll do, is, what they'll say is, if you want to make your fifth day, you got to work that Saturday or that Sunday. It's just like when they cut. That's like when the driver bids a trip. They they'll cut that trip. And then tell the driver, well, if you want to work, you got to go do another route or something else. And a lot of times they go home. So that's how they're going to try to squeeze in that five and then they seven. See, they thought outside the box. And I don't know why our officials didn't think of it, but this 22-4 is going to affect everybody, not just drivers. I think that the 1997 grievance that was for full-time jobs because UPS didn't want to do it during strike years. The copper one talks very explicitly about the drivers getting laid off and UPS claims of uh, loss of vibe and loss of work. The Hoffa one, something he did positive. He got to make sure that those full-time jobs were first made in 1997. The reason why I got a job, the reason why all you guys well, we got a job. Here. Oh yeah, definitely. They're all coming through here, right? Right. But the problem has grown that the drivers get cut and drivers get assigned to overtime. So there's a problem. These guys lose pension contributions, so our pension gets shorted because overtime is not contributed into the pension right. fund, according to Bill Shanahan, only eight hours a day, not eight hours or the 40 hours a week out reads inside the collective bargaining agreement. It's a big deal. If the guys work on Saturday or Sunday and they have these half-day splits or they work full-time preloads, whatever the case may be, because UPS can technically make the schedule anywhere, any way they want and put you in a classification of job that technically 
is already assigned to the local, such as a full-time preload, such as an Article 22 pre-combo position, any type of work to make your guarantee for the week. Right. They can design it any way they want. So technically, they can still dish out a ton of overtime to the drivers and still make these crazy jobs any way they like, based upon whatever goes on. It's a big deal because the classification of work that you do, as Inside Our Sultan says in Article 54, you pay for the highest rated classification you work in. Nowhere does it ever say Article 22.3, 22.4. It says preloader, sorter, package car, feeder driver, clerk. They are to recognize classifications that are local, other than the Article 22.3s, which are recognized in the master. But some of those Article 22.3s, like Clarence and Hooker here, do work that's recognized in our local, the preload. Preload, right. As a higher rated paid job. The classification that you're getting now is based upon when the job was made, not the type of work that you do. That's a big deal, it's a big difference. Two people can be doing the exact same job and get paid differently, such as the split, split drivers with the air and inside work. These guys are working inside just as eight hours right. or whatever, and then they go out and they drive as an air driver. The air driver full time rate, right, is the same as the Article 22 3 rate, right? It's a little less. A little less. Yeah. But they get paid their part time rate for inside work, even though they're full time. The full time rate for inside work at these jobs should be paid at least at the minimum an Article 22 3 rate. Right. Or the recognized rates for that type of work within our local within the collective bargaining agreement. So why does that happen, though? Well, let's say the local says, oh, well, it's in the master, or it's in the supplement, or it's this way or that way. They don't have a consistent attitude of how you get paid, and that's the problem. Yes. And now it's getting more blurred, the lines when they get blurred, cause a bigger problem for you, me, and everybody else. We've seen this happen down at Oregon Avenue where they talk about if I do a double, not do a double, assigned on the same shift, am I getting overtime after five? Which is it? The preload is a very large shift, it's a full-time shift. The preload operation now runs from like, say, five o'clock in the afternoon, six o'clock in the afternoon, whatever time they start it. All the way up till 8 30, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock the next morning. And we're gonna have? And we're gonna have them. That's correct. They have part timers that they assign to this twilight hours first, but technically it is preload. Full timers work and it is preload work. So when they start at that time, when they go beyond the fifth hour, they're supposed to get paid time and a half. Right. Even if they have a lunch period or a meal period, it doesn't matter because they're on their assigned shift, which is the preload work. They don't do two different types of work. That is what a double is, and that's what it should always be considered as. Not the same type of work on your shift. For instance, what happens if you're out on the day ramp, and you go in and they ask you to stay late for a plane? Is it staying late, or is it a double on the ramp? If you're on the ramp, you're doing the same type of work, right. you're on the same shift. The day ramp's an all-day thing. The midnight ramp's an all-day thing. You're not doing two different units of work. You're doing the same shift, and it should apply. We had someone come to the hall, a girl, I forget her name, was talking exactly about that a minute ago. She was full part time, worked her five hours. UPS wanted her to go take an hour lunch and then bring her back on. The two of your books. Wanted, two of your books? Yeah. And she wanted to get paid overtime after five, and rightfully so. The company does not have the option to randomly just say, this is a new shift automatically. You get paid overtime after the fifth hour. That's it. And a meal period language should apply because if they know they're keeping you late, then obviously, you know. You should get a meal period somewhere in there. Right. You know, the part-timers lose the out on this particular thing because they automatically should get a paid meal period regardless. That should be a half hour automatic because they lose. Right. You know, they lose. They lose. And that's a big thing. You might see this little bit of bump and raise, but as people are slowly, steadily diving down Oregon Avenue realizing, hey, a guy coming up the street is going to make the same as me. Same thing. Or yeah. He's only going to be 80 cents behind me or 70 cents behind me. Right. I'm upset about that. I don't like that. I don't. I want to make sure my years count for something. Right. Right. Seniority should mean something. That's why we pay. That's why we pay the dues. We were talking about seniority last night too. A guy down at Oregon Avenue just hired. He came from Amazon. He said he was talking about you know getting a better job at UPS. Well, the older guy Joe Mikeson in the building said, "Yeah, you got to wait a year before you can go drive." And I said, "Listen, don't waste your time. Go back to HR." Higher and quit. It doesn't matter because if this thing goes through, yep. you're going to come back at a higher rate anyway. Right. It doesn't make sense to wait. The one year waiting period is ridiculous for the members of our local have to wait one year in order to get a full time job opportunity. Right. It doesn't help. I want to also say that at this meeting on Saturday, Bill Shanahan 
needs to have agreements ready to show people how to file for full-time jobs inside the building. I put them on blast, he needs to go make it. The guy wanted to work hub hub inside, he might not know how to write that agreement. A lot of people don't know how to write right. agreements inside the building. Right. It's, a, it's a big glaring fact. There's no letter that comes out that shows them how to go and right. file agreements. As a matter of fact, they want your steward to write it, or you go call the hall and ask them if it's okay to file the agreements or not. They want to be in control of the grievance process and not the grievance. The grievance is the first line of defense in making something happen. The steward's there to back him up, and the hall's there to back the back steward, steward and the member up. Yes. Because that's how it has to happen. Right. And, if they, and, if the, and if the case is bogus, they need to articulate why. They need to send a letter. They need to make sure that that guy understands, right. hey, this is why it's working like right. this. I know it's not clearly defined. I know Jumbo had some problems with that issue last week about how the language reads when they say they make jobs, and I thought about that, and I talked about it with him. I said, I was at the meeting where they said, yeah, it's the first three years and that's how it's going to work because it's, it's about when they make it inside the master. Then I thought about it some more. What happens if a job gets moved from, let's say, local 623 to local 104, right? An article combo job. They can move them around. Well, now UPS just made a new job in that year, in the fourth or fifth year. It's a new job. So do we get 25 more jobs on top? Because it's not clearly defined. Not to say right. that that's how it works, but I'm just saying right. that's the clarity that needs to be in, in the collective bargaining agreement. And we also all brought this up in a meeting with Shanahan and coming to negotiation time that Clarence brought the point. The preload work has job preference, right? Mm -hmm. But we don't get that down at the airport because there's unclear. We didn't even ask Shanahan to really even make new language. We want Shanahan just to make sure there's clear language right. that everybody can understand and understand what they're voting for. Billy Morris today was talking about if we don't come August 1st, that they're going to make us pay 50 cents or a dollar into the pension fund an hour. I said, how's that? Did it happen last time? The guy knew what it was because he's been there a long time. He knew it was a joke. But the fact that Billy Morris would say that shows that he's just trying to scare people in the voting. Yes, yes, yes. And that's wrong. The issue needs to be about showing a strong wall of solidarity to get UPS to understand you're not bullying us anymore. But that's the thing. That's though. what it comes down but to. Esno, there's not going to be solidarity between the leadership and the member, and that's going to be a problem because me, 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 and uh, I was talking to class about this, uh, and th this is what this is this is how they're going to even further the divide. Now, for some odd reason, UPS is still hiring. I mean, they just hiring, and hiring, and hiring. I mean, tonight I, I saw like two or three classes, right? And, and you know, Taylor, Dennis Taylor just extended the the contract. Now, what was it was like two months or indefinite, or whatever the case may be. Now, what happens in two months with these new hires just, who just get hired? What happens in two months? They gain seniority. They gain seniority. They're going to be able to vote. So now UPS can tell Joe, hey, Joe, in two months, your pay rate is going to jump up $2.65. Now, the unit's going to come down to tell them the same thing. Now, us three, we're going to say, hey, no, that's not, that's the case, but you're going to be losing out on the end. Who is the new hire going to believe? Us or the official and the company? The official. There you go. So now we got an uphill battle to fight. Now we can win it. We just got to make sure we get to them in time. You know what I mean? Because that's, the, and, and, and I hate to say it, but maybe that was part of the reason the whole time for him to extend it. Let's get these new guys off the street. Let them, the company tell them, because you see the company got on, on their web, on their web page, they care about your future now. All these years I've been working there, they, they never put it out that we care about your future. The company cares about your future when? They don't care about when the supervisors work. They don't care about when you got to file a grievance to get your money on time. Or when they harass you. Now they care about you now? No. They care about shorting your wallet. Yes. So their future is better and brighter. Because just today, as I was leaving, and the numerous amount of supervisors that I see working during the school, <laughs> at the end of the day, where was my lunch hour paid for? The strongest language in the country is in local 623 for supervisors working on the Oregon Avenue preload. I read them all. We work first before supervisors get used. Our meal period gets paid. You can't tell me there's not one day that goes by. All 40 of us shouldn't be getting off with our lunch because they, they work. should be doing it. Right. They work. Yeah. It's a ridiculous problem. The strongest language in the country treated like a piece of garbage. But if you I hate to say it. Right. You, you can know, have the strongest language in, in 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 the universe, but if you don't have the people backing it up, you don't have mean people anything. ready to go to war for it. It doesn't, it doesn't it, mean anything. Problem. And that's where we at. And that's where we at. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna touch on that. That 22-4 hybrid driver. 
the way you put it, Joe, where so you work on a ramp for five hours, then they give you a lunch period, you come back do the same job, it should be overtime. That's the same thing with the hybrid driver thing. They classify the same job just to pay you less. Right. So it, it, it is, is, is it, if you're doing something different, you're doing something different, but you're not. You get you should be paid at the classification the highest that you're rate doing. Right. So they're classifying the same exact job just so they can pay you less. So that 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 too is a big big problem. And then they wrap it up and say the reason why we had to come up with the hybrid driver because the drivers was complaining about excessive overtime. And we knew that. But you got language now in the contract to protect them from excessive overtime. So why would you come up with a, a job to uh, uh, to help eliminate overtime but pay them six dollars less when you got the language already to help it? First of all, overtime is not guaranteed. It's all cut this straight. We need Fender and all them know. Down there, the labor, you know, the labor managers all know overtime is not guaranteed. Job displacement is. Job displacement is. But overtime is not. So at the beginning of the day, when they cut jobs and they're trying to shuffle stuff around and make stuff work, but they still have excessive hours in the system that are not guaranteed to those drivers, they send drivers home. Right. Where's the haul coming in saying, whoa, hold it. You have to work that guy today and you're responsible for his pension payments. Again, the message is clear. If they were so busy trying to watch who's posting on Facebook, <laughs> you know, doing whatever it is they do, buddying up, playing games, grievances not getting processed in a timely manner, I can't tell you how many people complain about months and two months or more, such as myself, over three months for most of my grievances that I have filed, get some action, step up, make it happen, Focus on trying to win something, you know. Oh, they are. Like working. They focus on trying to win something, but it's just it, not. It, it's just it's not, not. It's not your grievance, right? It, 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 it's yeah, not, right. It's not. It's not. It's not your. Yeah. Reducing your excessive overtime. No. Well, some guys, listen. When we were out there, some people said they wanted overtime. Right. Guys on the inside do want it because right. they always get canned down. They get boxed into the spot where they say, "Wait, eight hours. You got to go." I heard rumors when they first made the Article Twenty Two trees. Guys working. It's his lunchtime. They come in and say the part timer can bump you out. I don't think that's true either. No, that's not true. Article 50, Section 9 clearly states you can't displace them. And Article 22 3 says the same thing. Article 22 2 says the same thing. You can't displace the full time employee or part timers. So if the job runs late and it's into my lunch hour, then I guess, guess what? You got to buy my lunch hour. It's automatic. It's not even a, it's a no brainer. Right. Do you think that the hall ever stepped up to the plane on that? I don't know. Ask you guys what happened. <laughs> But like you said, Joe, we got the strongest language for our supervisor working. But that contract means absolutely nothing if it's not being enforced. Right. So the meal period is clear. If you work into your lunch, any, and it says any part of your lunch, you are to be paid no less than an hour overtime and still given at least 20 minutes to eat. So if, if your job assignment is not done, they cannot replace you with an employee even if, it, even if it's an hourly employee, they can't replace you with anybody if your job assignment is not done. <clears throat> now, they've been getting away with it because, again, nobody's enforcing the contract. And even when you grieve it, they come down. That our, our supplement is so great <laughs> that it's great. any normal person can read that contract and you think it applies to you. It doesn't. Then they'll say, no, no, that's not that don't apply to you. It applies to this person, that person. Well, how am I supposed to know that? If, if, if it doesn't say that. So they can take anything in that contract in a supplement and say, no, this don't apply, you apply to somebody else. That's a lot of reasons why a lot of stuff don't get done right, like the middle period. Right. So do you think, in general, that the contract is misrepresented to you as a voter, right? Because it's not clear when they say, oh, well, it means the preloaders down at Oregon Avenue, but not the preloaders down at PHL. You think that the way the contract is worded, because it's unclear or vague, misrepresented to you the terms and conditions of employment? Oh yeah, oh yeah. You know, I, I definitely agree. Because if, if if you give me a if you give me a contract and I read it, and I'm voting yes because I like what it says, and then I try to enforce that language, then you come back and tell me that doesn't apply to me. Now I don't vote yes for something that that wasn't. Don't even apply to you. <laughs> and, right. 
just like when we went to the meeting, we asked Shanahan, yep, yep. how much is going to be the rate, how much is the strike fund, how much is this, how much is that. He don't know. But you tell me to vote yes for a strike, but you're not giving me any information. And, and that's, that's kind of how this local works. They don't want you to know nothing. I'm telling you. They, all, they want you to know just what they tell you. Right. So like you said with the grievance process, there's the first line of defense is the grievance. No, the way Shanahan runs it, he, he don't want nobody to know nothing more than what he tells and that's why a lot of this, a lot of this stuff don't get done. Yeah, what's next on the list here? I'm gonna say uh, more subcontracting and feeders. I think this is another big issue here that local 623 has, and maybe other locals across the country. There's part timers that have CDLs that are denied the opportunity to drive feeders. There is a shortage of feeder drivers openly admitted in the negotiation yep. process, mm -hmm. yet we cannot get our members to fill those full-time positions. That is a big problem. Yeah, it is. I was talking with a guy online from Local 104. He says the wait to go full-time in his local is two years. There's no transparency to the full-time process. Here you're going to have possible more subcontracting in the feeder department. Yet we have guys that have CDLs down at the airport that could probably do that. Do the job, right. Or be I'm, there. I actually know a few who have CDLs. Now, Shanahan's excuse last meeting was the company wants somebody with all this experience, or whatever the case may be. But you have part-times who work part-time and drive full-time for other people or, or have done it full-time right. who are just as qualified as these subcontractors who are looked over because to be for for, for part time, reason. right? Because they part time. And so you're discriminating against your own people because the qualified people are there, and you should exhaust every possibility before you right. go to an outside source to hire a job, especially a full time job like that. Also, I like to talk about the harassment issue. Yes, <laughs> the harassment yes. issue. Yes, is left to two parties here, UPS and the Teamsters, who are in this process that have no transparency in the harassment process, so you or me or Clarence or anybody else here listening can say, hey, oh, that was harassment, this is harassment. We can kind of get an idea on how to file for it. Not there. Two, the two, the one party who's getting charged, UPS, is in the actual process of figuring out whether they're guilty or not. <laughs> right. And, as we all know, the horse trading factor that goes on with some people, yeah. I'll take care of this, uh, you get you give me that now shortens or I mean I say discredits the process. Discredits the process because what if you're going for a true harassment grievance and they decide to horse treat your grievance away, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing's happening to you. You obviously were harassed. They say we we'll just slap it on the wrist and we'll say that's it. You're not going to get paid. Nothing's going to happen. But UPS and this whole process here. It should be an independent person that decides the harassment grievance. Let the Teamsters and UPS both present their cases and let it be an independent person who decides the harassment grievance. Right. That is a big deal. I think everybody here can agree that you know harassment issues are sometimes someone feels harassed if they get talked to one time the wrong way. Yeah. I think harassment is a repetitive behavior. Right. But I think it's important to file the first time. Yeah show that you know when behavior exists for documentation purposes i think that there needs to be a time limit of a different standard for particular harassment issues because you and supervisors can work together for two years you might he might not come over to you every day because he's busy running around but every time he comes over to you he does something that's um inappropriate not right talks wrong harasses you belittles you right you know does things to try to motivate you when the true motivation is, hey, stick to the plan, stay focused, do the methods, it'll get done, I see what's going on here, I'll try to get somebody over to help you out in these pinch situations that are coming down, because the flow can't be regulated, it's not automated, you know, you can't judge, like, if we know Clarence here is scanning, and he can scan 250 pieces an hour, there's nothing in the system that's going to make him be able to that pace is 250 an hour right. for the entire time. They want it however pace it comes. Well, okay, you gotta try to dig in and do 330 now because that last 15 minutes we're only gonna get, uh, you know, 15 pieces an hour. We don't want you sitting around for that half hour. We gotta try to punch you out and go home. So 
you can't make that easy money. And you just be, you know. Killing yourself. For the killing, yeah. Yourself, yeah. killing yourself. Yeah. Killing yourself. Yeah. 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 That, yeah. That, and that's pretty much how they work. It. Now, the 40 hour guarantee eliminated. We kind of touched on that a little while ago. And this one says you guys can lay off drivers on Mondays if no work is available because of weekend deliveries. And they actually put in a contract if work is it's available. available. Yeah. So they if, if they cut out the drivers, they don't need no loaders, they don't need no sorters. So it's going to be a trickle down. This hybrid driver thing is going to be a trickle down effect to all of us. So this is one another reason why we need to vote this contract down, send Dennis Taylor Hoffa back to the table, and come up with something real. This, this, this yeah. all this stuff is is bogus. Yeah. It is all bogus. I agree. I think that the part-timers have even a bigger gripe because there's a lot of part-timers who work full-time hours but don't get paid full-time wages. That's a classification in itself. How many hours you work in a day should dictate whether you're part-time or full-time in a day. It becomes very sketchy because you have jobs down in Louisville that are 30 hours a week considered a full-time person. You have, in the state of Texas, it's 32 hours. That's all you have to work in a week to be considered full-time. So there needs to be a standard in which someone can say, hey, listen, now I'm working as a full-time right. inside, right. or I know I'm covering job one, two, three, four, five, and I'm going to get paid this full-time wages because I'm covering Mr. Hooker's job or Clarence's job or Joe Esposito's job. You know, at the Oregon App Reload, we have been in position, so it's easily defined. They would tell you down to you that you guys don't have any job reference or right. your job isn't clearly defined. Right. But it had to be clearly defined at one time in order for it to get made because they had to constitute the hours. You just can't say, oh, wait a minute, this operation has a thousand hours out of it, and he has a thousand hours, and then figure out how to get four and four for both these guys. Right. You yeah. know, you have to you have to design the work. It's very important. And speaking of that, the, the, in the contract, it's, it's clearly states preload employees will be given job preference at the beginning of the year, just like with the driver's bid. And I actually put a grievance in for that, and I was told- And what happened to the grievance? Tell me what happened to the grievance, Clarence. I was told <laughs> that it doesn't apply to the PHL airport. My question is, it doesn't say Oregon Avenue, it doesn't say PHL, it says full-time preload employee. So I'm a full-time preload employee, why doesn't it apply to me? Right. So that that's the stuff, that that's that gray area. So they can do that with any part of the contract. And that's, and that's how they get us, right. because they can say, you can clearly read it, and then they'll turn around and say, no, that don't apply to you. But I'm, my, my dues is paid, so, right. but well, why y'all not down here fighting for what for what's y'all negotiate? So it's negotiating in there. So and it, like, all it says is preload employee. So why am I not covered <laughs> in that same order? Right, Clarence, they don't have enough money technically process all the grievances that we could potentially file. Oh, okay. Shanahan said in January he couldn't put on an extra business agent to handle payroll discrepancies. So if that's oh, okay. the case, you know, just imagine how many grievances might get thrown in the trash as the integrity slate tried to point out beforehand, you know, with Billy Mars and crew. That they just sometimes they fell off the table. They, That's they what he said. The fell table. off the table. They fell off the table. I remember that. I remember that. Table in the trash. Yeah, in the trash. yeah, I remember that. Yeah, they yeah, yeah. They fell off the table. Yeah. They don't get processed right. Yeah. You know, there needs to be an accounting of what happens there. Yeah. You need to go up to the hall in force and say, listen, I want to see what grievances were filed, how many grievances you guys are working, what's the legwork, how many grievances went to panel, how many grievances are getting arbitrated. I noticed at the last meeting there was a thousand dollars in arbitration fees, whatever that was out in the uh, monthly report. Right. But no mention of what was getting arbitrated at the meeting. I think that's a really big issue. You know, if UPS is doing something against us and our fellow members, in order to build solidarity, we need to better explain what's going on. No. What? Well, 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 my man Jumbo here? Is is the supplement completed? They said that, well, you know, I'm on the e-board, and I really can't answer it, but they said that they have a handshake agreement, so... Uh, Did they ain't tell you what it is? No, they don't, they don't tell me that. Uh, uh, they said I'm an officer, but... Uh, hold on, man. They sent an email to UPS, they said, 
do not recognize Jumbo. Uh, do not use Jumbo for anything. Oh, you know, let me, let me ask you this. Why I got you here, Jumbo? Why I got you here? Now, now we talked about this. Now, a couple of people, uh, there's, there's a, uh, some words going around the hub that uh, you telling people vote no, vote no, vote no. But in negotiations, you were saying yeah to everything in the settlement. Now, we got to clear this up. You gotta clear this up, cause I, I'm, I'm, I don't want to keep going back and forth with this thing. You're right, and I answered it. I don't know how many times you said it at the the, the meeting one time where you where you made a mistake about the whole uh, um, half an hour lunch period. That wasn't a good thing. You were the only one that came out and said that. Everybody else was cool with it, right? So now they want to beat you up and say, "Hey, look, Jumbo, you said yeah in the behind closed doors, but then when they were in public, he want to tell everybody to vote no." So just what happened in the supplement? Let everybody know what's going on with the supplement. Uh, what happened in negotiations? Because we don't know anything. Well, the supplement, we really didn't negotiate anything. The supplement, we was fighting to keep what we had. We didn't, we didn't gain anything. We didn't, we didn't gain anything really. The only thing we got was to have an hour lunch, right? And I thought that's what the drivers wanted, but come to find out, they didn't want it. They right. beat us up about that. And when we was at the union meet, I owned up to it, right? So everybody knows I'm a vote no guy. I'm always gonna be a vote no guy. So what happened is uh, the, the master slash nas national contract. I didn't sit on that. I didn't sit on that committee. Right. The only way I could vote yes, I got to sit on the committee. You know what I mean? All I was in the supplement. Supplement. The supplement right. We didn't. We didn't get anything. We didn't get anything at all. Nothing at all. Anything we got, uh, they didn't want. They didn't want to get. So, it how, so how was negotiations? Like how how was? I mean, did. Listen, UPS came to fight. I mean, UPS came to rumble. UPS came with their A game. They came with their A game. You know, we need the labor man. I mean, we need the labor lawyer in the room with us or somewhere in the building with us, right? But UPS came to rumble. You know, in so many words, it was cost neutrality. Right. So they wasn't willing to give us anything, nothing at all. So you know, we got so to have So lunch. we didn't get anything in the supplement. Didn't get anything. So all it's right. pretty much the same thing. Right. All right. Okay. So let's get this straight. UPS wants cost neutrality, so they want no new additional cost to the operation. If anything, they want a reduction in cost. Correct? That'd be, oh, wait, that, would, that would be what they're looking for, right, John? Is, is, is that what they're saying? Cost neutrality. Yeah. Because if, if that's the case, I just left a building where though you got a construction team tearing the building up and building a whole new small store. That costs money. So where that money coming from? So if you want cost neutrality, why are you building up a whole new small store tearing the building up? So you ain't losing nothing. You want to take from us. So so that cost neutrality, what they're saying, all that stuff that they're building up is because they're not giving us anything they're taking back from us. Right. So you really need to really look at what's going on. Hey, real quick, Hector got a question. He got two questions for you, Joe. Is it, is, is, are you still a Fred Zuckerman guy? And uh, what do you think about Sean O'Brien? All Good right, question. so well, we can't really answer that question. Uh, 623 Lives Matter, what happened is we're going to fight the contract right now. We're worrying about fighting the contract, getting a good contract for the members, $15 an hour for part-timers, and no hybrid driving. That's what we're fighting for right now. Uh, Fred Zuckerman, everybody knows I love Fred Zuckerman. Nobody loves Fred Zuckerman more than I do, right? But Fred Zuckerman, Sean O'Brien, after the contract is done, our team, we will get... We will sit down and discuss what we're going to do. Richard Hooker, Clarence Bagby, Esposito, we all got to sit down. We really don't, you know, we don't know. Yeah, we, I, our, we don't know. Yeah, our, our, main, our main goal right now is this contract. And then, of course, uh, next year. That's what I'll tell these guys. We got to focus on 2019. Contract, 2019. 2021 get here, you know, it, it is, it's going to take care of itself. You know, I, I'm, I'm a Fred guy. O'Brien, you know, it's not... Not, I, I, I'm gonna be honest. I'm not really feeling that right now, because you know of all the stuff that has happened. You know, I was there in the convention. I seen how he how he acted. You know, it, I mean, my, my main thing is with with the O'Brien thing is, if you knew that he was absentee landlord and he was no good, and some other guy was running the low at the, the union and all this other kind of stuff, he said after, after Hoffa kicked him off. You know, uh, being the chief negotiator. Right, then, then, then you come out and say you've been knowing this for years. Now, if you've been knowing that for years, then then why wait until you get kicked off the negotiating committee? I, I just, you know, 
I, I, I can't I, I can't get down with that. Yeah, so what happened is on that same question, Fred Zuckerman, Sean O'Brien, people have called me across the country uh, very, very upset. People are very upset. They don't know what's going on. But uh, like I said, most important thing right now is the contract. Yeah. 2021, we'll deal with that, right? But like I said, everybody that got out 2016 and campaigned for Fred, we want to thank you. That was the best campaign ran ever. Yeah, it was good. And, it was good. You know, we almost won. Yeah. If people would have voted, yeah, we would have won. won. Yeah, right. We had 1.3 million teamsters. Right. The number was 283,000 like 283, voted. Right. So everybody said, jump, we're going to vote next time. Now you're saying next time, <laughs> now you see what happened. Right, right, right. Yeah, but uh, hey, Hector, man, we got uh, we want to give a shout-out to Hector and his radio show, Union Power Radio. Um, make sure you guys download that app in my XLR. This show comes on every Saturday from 3 to 5. A lot, a lot of entertainment the last few weeks, man. They've been, they've been, they've been going at it on that show. A very, very good show, and uh, yo, and the stuff that happens here at our local, it's happening everywhere. You know, it's not just a, a, a local six two three thing. This is a, a, a global thing. I mean, it happens everywhere. There's a lot of locals, man, that's that's under attack. You know, by you know by their own leaders. Their own leaders are attacking the membership. You know, I mean, they're selling them out. They're letting the company, the company dominate them all the time, giving them bad contracts, not telling them what's going on. And, and that's what's going on here. Same thing. Same thing as 2013. It looked like they're trying to do it again in 2018. But we're we, we going to do what we can to not let that happen. That's why I'm telling you guys, you guys got to, to, to educate each other. Don't lean on this person or that person or the, or the e-board. You already know what the e-board is going to do. They're already telling people. You know that we don't know what we're talking about. They're going. I'm telling you, they're going to try to sell this contract to you, like they sold it to us in 2013. Then when it gets down down to the nitty gritty, they're going to throw up the whole retro uh, 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 rate thing. The reason why you ain't getting your money is because of Jumbo, because of Clarence, because of Espo. That's why you ain't getting your money. That's don't what forget, they're going to tell you. Don't forget what they put out. They said, don't listen to Hooker. Hooker's all for itself. Yeah. Don't listen to that's, yeah. the, that's the first yeah. thing they put out. Yeah. Don't listen Do not to listen to Richard right. Hooker. He's all for itself. Right. Yeah. And don't listen to me, please. Do your own research. Uh, yeah, I, I don't want you to. Because, listen, when I listened to somebody else last time, it cost me a lot. And it's still costing me. It's costing a lot of people. Not just me. It's costing a lot of people. So, yeah, yeah. do your own research. That's why when I talked to the member today, I just didn't tell them to vote no. And these are the ten reasons why. I gave them the the the... The article on which one of the points was talking about. So that's what I think we need to do. When you tell somebody to vote no, look it up on the contract when you talk about the 10 points. Let them see that the contract that was negotiated by the people that's telling them to vote yeah, the people that's taking that money every week, let them see this is what they're trying to sell them. And this is why we're voting no. In 2013, uh, I was told that they, they did the same thing. They was told health care was going to be the same thing. They told us all. They gave us all this hope. And it was that's when we found out what the truth was. And we had to find out the hard way. Yeah, a lot of people go to the doctor, can't see their regular doctor because of health care. Uh, hey, oh, hey, real quick. Uh, Do anybody had a good question? He said, why did Kevin Malley step down from being the business agent. Okay. Because I remember Izzy yeah. talked to you about it. I'm going to give you what I was told, and I'm going to give you my thoughts. I was told that if he comes back in the building, he would have to work five years to requalify for his retiree benefits. But if he come in now, he can work one year and, re and, and retire and re requalify. So is that because he thinks that in 2019 that he won't be he, that his slate won't win the election is it is it because he's retiring it's more to the story than what they're telling us i mean it could be that because why would you step down from being the bit to me you're letting down the members who voted for yeah you. because this is the contract time and you're stepping down in the middle of a contract yeah. that's kind of bad and then they didn't even tell you and you on the board that's the part that drives me crazy how are you on the board and you don't know and if you got people, people voted for you for a position for you, 
and they knew the position that you were, that she was one of four and we voted for them, you to win. So for you to step down, and that's your let to everybody that voted for you, you just turned your back on and, everybody. And it required a secretary, according to the bylaws, that's not a, you know, uh, you know, one of those pretty, pretty do-nothing positions. If you look at the bylaws where it's written, that's one of the three positions that can run the local. You got the president, secretary, treasurer, or the recording secretary. So it's not like, you know, a, you know, a trustee or something. Yeah, you know what I mean? This is a, a major, that's a, that's a big major spot. position. Yeah, so the question is, I'm on the e-board, right? So who is the recording secretary now? They well, say it is the BA now, but is he BA slash recording secretary or is Wharton B BA slash recording secretary? No, Kevin, Kevin Mal is still a recording secretary in name. So I guess it will still take the notes at the meeting. But I two said, things are different. But the right. mem well, let right. me, before we go any far, the membership should have been informed. And right. should, everybody should have had a letter at their house knowing what's going on. Not at the meeting July 20th. The, 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 shop, stores, the, the shop stores right. directly affected should have right. known. He's my BA. Right. right. I, I didn't even know. And that, that, that's, I, that's I, not I, good. I don't even know. Because I, I still got grievances that need to be taken care of. And now, you know, I don't... I, yeah, because I had, I, I had, you know, I, I had I, a brother I, stop me. I was in the building at uh, 8 o'clock, and brother stopped me. He said, Jump, so let me ask you a question. Now, if F Kevin Malley is stepping down as BA, and I got a grievance with him, who going to settle? Well, that, 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 I told him, Izzy, he like, yo, I want my grievance settled before he, he leave. I'm like, you're right. And this grievance has been going on for like two or three months. So, I mean, that's not good. You know yeah. what I mean? Right. The membership pay for a service and they're not getting. You know what I mean? Right. Just like the one other thing. Now, Shanahan is saying you have to use shop steward in your own area, right? right. I was told as long as you paying their salary, you can use any shop store in any way in any area. And this is what I was told, right? So that's a big problem because people don't feel comfortable with, with certain shop stores. You understand know what I'm saying, right? And it's never it's never been like that before, right? This is a sound of weakness. No matter what happened, when George and Jerry was secretary treasurer, right? George and I, we had a big fall on that. And I would take care of stuff. He didn't agree with it. He would come in and change it. But once you let UPS management know that, like, they went in the, they had a hand, they was in the meeting. They told preload, Shanahan, do not use Richard Hooker on preload. UPS management laughing, saying, yo, they're a joke. They say we're weak. Why would you go in there and say, do not use Richard Hooker as a shop store on preload. You don't say that. That's wrong. No, no. Being a shop store, I've been a shop store over ten years. And here's my thing with that: if you do your job as a shop store, you don't have to ask anybody to come to use you. They're going to use you because you feel they feel comfortable right. with you, because you fought for them, because you did the right thing. Nobody's had to tell you to go use a shop store. They don't want to use you. Maybe it's something that you're not doing for them. Or maybe that they left a different area and they're used to the, the shop store that was in that right, area. Right, so right. So if they're paying dues, they should feel they should really use who they feel comfortable with. Sometimes it's not just about the shop store in the area. They just feel comfortable with a certain person. And not, and they should really use who they want. The electric shop store should always be there while the dude's in the process because he needs to know what goes on in his own center. Yeah. I agree with that. But when a guy wants to turn in a grievance, he should be able to turn it into any union representative that he so desires so the grievance is filed in a timely manner. And it's up to the grievance to say, hey, listen, I need so-and-so with me because he's more familiar with what goes on. He might know more of the history that's going on. Yeah. Right. And that, and that provides a beneficial hearing, a beneficial person in a hearing on that person's behalf. So even if the go shop stewards somehow just can't get it together or agree to have, have everybody present at the meeting that's necessary, which this in case it would be, you know, something's got to change. The hall has to come down and Shanahan being the leader needs to come down and say, listen, stop bickering, work together, get the member <coughs> service first. And that's what it's about, the member. If the member feels comfortable with Jumbo over anybody or whatever, then that's what it should be about. I don't care. As long as you get your needs met, that's what you're paying for. You're paying for your needs to be met, and if they're not being met because you got uh, you want to pay politics or you want you got a, a personal problem with this that, that's your problem. As long as a member is serviced properly and professionally, then there shouldn't be no issue. I think as long as the member's rights are upheld, yes, that's the most important thing. 
I see a lot of things just getting settled less and less, not the full amount. People getting, you know, discharged and then they get they get to come back with a two week suspension or five weeks, five day suspension, whatever the case may be. That's wrong. It's wrong. You can choose who gets what all the time. Right. You know, they want to put this triple time language inside inside the grievance, but honestly, um, for the supervisor's working. For supervisor's working. But if I can't get double time in this contract, what well, much you think I'm gonna get right? Triple time in the next contract. Right, and that's the thing about it. you when can't I even trick. Right. Talking to them about you know records and stuff with the hall and Kevin Malley and Bill Shanahan both like records, records. Oh my gosh, records. Records are what we need to have because records help you win the case because records make facts, yeah. not opinions. You know, you can talk about a case, but you need to have the facts to win the case because opinions. Someone can start poking holes through opinions. Can't do no facts. Can't, Can't do, do no, no facts. facts. Right. And that's what's all important. All right. So, like, like Rich said, the biggest thing is making sure the members feel comfortable and their needs are met. Right. That's the purpose of the union. We're, we're supposed to protect the membership. And it doesn't matter who does it as long as they're doing the job. That's it. As long as they're doing the job, they should, that, that, that should only be the thing. Now, it, it was, I'll, I'll let Rich tell a story, but I really want you guys to hear this. What it was a member who wanted Rich in the in the office, with the lady he got hurt. And I feel so bad because she filed the grievance and she was talked down to by the executive board for using Rich in the hearing. Yeah. So, I mean, that, 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 that to me is a problem. Yeah. When you got your leaders looking down and she at got you. Fired. And she's, and she's no that. longer with the company no more. She's no longer with the company, man. It was a sad situation. I ain't, I ain't gonna really get into it because, like I said, this is about the contract, man. And, and uh, so. A perfect example of using the shop steward from what area. It's, diff it's different situations, right? On prelim, we got one female. Only one person can deal with it. Nobody wants to deal with it. I'm, and I go deal with it. I mean, I, I mean, it is what it is. You got situations like that. Just like management. In the hub, you got certain individuals keep getting in trouble. The same trouble, and they keep getting hookers. They get hookers. Hookers the only one can deal with them. And yes, Clarence area, but Hooker's the only one to deal with him. You know, it was times that when George was in the office, they would call me and they said, Jim, you got to be in Cardiff at 5 o'clock. It was one guy, one, one brother over there, only I could deal with. He started talking Jamaican. Right. Right? And I was the only one to deal with. So I usually had to get up 5 o'clock and deal with him. You understand what I'm saying, right? So this is wrong when you're saying that you had to use a shop store in each area. It's not going to work. Not at 623. <laughs> um, I forgot what else I was about to say. But, uh, yeah, but pay attention to uh, the sales job that's getting ready to come out. Pay attention to uh, all the information that's coming coming out. And we got to hit these new hires because UPS, I don't know if you guys have saw their page. They are really, uh, really trying to promote this contract. And all the years I've been here, I've never never seen the company prom try to promote a contract you know it's bad you know it's bad when the company is promoting the contract i mean they even got to say they care about your future on there i mean i i've i've never seen that how you gonna care about somebody's future when you ain't taking care of them right now time almost up Time about you oh talk, oh you yeah 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 we're getting ready to roll out but um this uh friday um myself and another member from 623 sherry we was invited to this event in Utah, Salt Lake City. We're going to be talking about uh, a few issues, uh, Teamster issues, uh, poor people, human economic rights, uh, uh, stuff like that. Uh, it's called Path to Power, Immigrants, Low Wage Workers, and Teamsters Battle from Below. Uh, it's going to be on uh, live stream on Facebook Live um, on July the 20th, Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 4 p.m. Uh, mountain time, so please watch that. It's going to be a lot of information, a lot of stuff going on. A lot of uh, people who know how to fight, who've been fighting for a long time, they're going to be out there, and it's an honor and, and a privilege for this opportunity. It's not something that we did was so great, or because we're so good. It's because of you guys that believe it in us um, that we are able to go out and promote um, the positive message, pr promote. Um, progress and being and having a purpose and having a vision for a union that seems to lack it, especially from our heads. We don't have that right now, but it, it, it's going to happen. It, it's coming, uh, but we got to do our part. We got to vote. We got to educate each other. 
We gotta be positive. We can't keep dwelling and, and being negative and all these kinds of things because that's not helping anybody. So again, past the power, immigrants, low wage workers, and team, uh, teamsters battle from below. And, and when I saw that, that's shocking because about 20 years ago, that, that wouldn't even been together. Teamsters battle from below, 20 years ago would have been teamsters leading from the front. Now we, now we got a battle from below. And a lot of it has to do with our leadership. But we'll talk about that uh, on Salt Lake City. Make sure y'all tune in. And uh, on fr um, Friday, July the 20th, 6 p.m. Uh, any, and any teams that watch this is in Utah, uh, send me a message. Uh, Facebook me. If you got if email, if, you want to, if you're not on Facebook, whatever the case may be, email at 623LivesMatter at gmail.com. We can hook up. We can hit some gates out there in Utah. Uh, you know, that'll be a good thing because that's what it's going to take. It's going to take everybody all across the country linking up, hooking up, talking, and educating the membership because I'm going to tell you, UPS and our leaders are going to try to get this contract to go past. They, they really are going to try. I'm telling you, they're they doing it now. They're PCM and they're telling our members it's already done. Um, you know, they're telling the members that, hey, look, you know, in about a couple months, uh, you guys are going to go up about $2.65. You know that they, they, you know, all the part times, 18, 19 year olds still living at home, don't have no, con you know, no responsibilities. They're gonna jump on that because they don't know the teams to life. They don't know uh, all the retirees that came before us that, in the position that we are in now, uh, because of the retirees. And you know, and the retirees, you know, they still, they still giving it. They giving it to the retirees, and they giving it. They sticking it to the part timers. You know, the people that built the company. They sticking it to, and the, the most important uh, person with the most people, they sticking it to them too. I, I just, I just don't get it. I don't get it. But uh, we gonna get ready to get out of here. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Again, this is WOM 92.9 uh, South Philadelphia Community Radio, giving you another live edition of the 623 Lives Matter Radio Show. Again, man, it's it's always good to come on here. See you guys on Facebook and, uh, and all the people that's listening to on the radio. We appreciate you. I'm going to give it over to uh, my cohorts here. They're going to give you some closing closing words. <clears throat> my closing words are very simple. Vote, vote, vote. That's it. You got to vote. All right. What do we want? We want a fair contract. We want to vote no for hybrid drivers and part-timers deserve $15 an hour. Once again, part-timers, you must vote. $15 an hour. That's what we're looking for. Uh, don't forget Friday. Time. 6 o'clock, July 20th. Friday, 6, 6 p.m. 6, 6, 6 p.m. Richard Hooker will be on the radio. All right. And we'll put all the information on the Facebook page. All right. Again, we appreciate y'all for joining in, listening. We love you guys. And I appreciate you guys for all that you guys do. Trust me. This is not about us. I don't care what nobody tell you. And I'm hoping that you guys see it. Uh, it's not about vote. It's about the membership. We don't care if you vote for us or not. We really don't care. But we do care about you and what you're going to do and how you live and how you're going to progress and how you're going to take care of your family. We do care about that. So, again, make sure you guys pay attention to all this information because the sales job has already happened. You see what they try to do to Jumbo saying he, uh, he don't know what he's talking about. He's... One way behind closed doors, out in the public, he's something different. So it's coming, it's gonna keep coming. But listen, we don't care. We're not going nowhere. We're not. It, there's nothing you can do to break us up. Uh, we, we're not about the negativity. We already have determined our disposition with the people who care for us and the people who don't. It's gonna be the same. We're gonna love you. We're gonna say God bless you, and and, and we appreciate you, regardless of what side you're on. We we don't care. All we care about is moving forward, and that's what we're gonna to continue to do. All right. We appreciate you again. We love you. See you next week.